So welcome to the Business Opportunity Recognition in Sustainable Development Goals Symposium here at the Metropolia University of Applied Sciences in Finland. This symposium is a part of uh, the Project Knowledge Alliance for the Business Opportunity in Sustainable Development Goals, SDG 4Bs, uh, funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the EU. Uh, my name is Hye Jung Mayanen. I'm a project coordinator for the SDG 4Bs project. Before starting, I kindly inform that uh, this symposium is video recorded and uh, it will be used for the project uh, dissemination. It's my honor to introduce uh, the head of the business school at the Metropolia University of Applied Science, Mrs. Minna Hautamaki, for opening remarks. Please welcome Minna Hautamaki. Well, uh, good morning everyone, first of all. Welcome to Finland, to those of you who came from abroad. Dear visiting partners, dear Metropolia colleagues, and dear participants. On my behalf, I would like to welcome you all to the Metropolia Myrmäki campus for the second day of this SDG for Business 2022 symposium. I have to say, and I think that we all agree that it's very nice to see everybody, like, you know, face to face, live on site after these couple of corona years. Um, as you probably know, Metropolia is the biggest university of uh, applied sciences in Finland. We are located in four different campuses, and we have some 16 to 17,000 students, all in all, studying in different fields of engineering. Um, arts and culture, social sciences, and business. So, shortly, very diverse, very international as a university. Um, this uh, Myrmäki campus, where we are today, is the home of the business school and then two engineering departments of Metropolia. The umbrella theme of the campus is sustainable and green future. So it's very much in line with the theme of today and, and, and this conference. And I understand that you will be taken to a campus tour later today, so you will see some of the activities on campus. And uh, through this, uh, we hope that we can show you one aspect of Metropolia's dedication to sustainability issues. Besides the um, importance of the sustainability as a theme and a good fit for this campus, I have to say that the, um, uh, this project and this symposium, they have a very specific significance for us as business school members. We have long been in Metropolia a unit of teaching and learning mostly, and uh, this SDG for Business, in fact, is uh, the first international RDI project that our team has the honor of leading. So therefore, it makes us even happier to welcome you all on this, on this campus and, and uh, uh, inside this team. So once more, I wish you all very welcome to Myrmäki campus. And on my behalf, I wish you all a very successful and interesting day. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mrs. Hautamaki. Uh, Metropolia is a coordinating organization of the SDG 4 Beach project. We will listen about the Metropolia's approach to sustainability. I have honor to introduce Metropolia's sustainability manager, Mrs. Eli Oyala. Mrs. Oyala has a master's degree in corporate environmental management. She is enthusiastic about developing the sustainability of organizations that is a uh, concrete way of making the world a little bit better. Please welcome Mrs. Oyala. Thank you, and thank you for having me here. So, <coughs> sorry, I was asked to introduce and, and tell a few words about Metropolia's approach to sustainability. And sustainable development is a new theme in our strategy 
and our strategy, strategy was introduced in 21. So we are kind of new to the whole, you know, ambitious sustainability work, but we are on the way and we have ambitious targets and doing our best and, and, and started the work thoroughly. Um, I'll try to keep it short since I know we're on a tight schedule. Uh, here you can see a picture of, uh, it's kind of a summary of our sustainability work. Uh, you can see uh, three levels of impact to society and I will explain all of these three levels uh, separately but uh, the whole, I think the whole purpose for a higher education institution comes from the two, the levels two and three. So we are uh, educating future professionals and we are making sustainable solutions and innovations that have a big impact to the society. So we can do our best in our own activities, but the bigger meaningful impact comes from the, you know, the learning and, and teaching the future professionals and from the solutions. But briefly uh, about our first level. So the impact to society in, in our own actions is not so huge, but we have to take care of metropolias, people, so meaning students and employees. We have to take care of the environment and reduce our environmental impact as much as possible in our everyday operations. And also we have to operate in an economically sustainable manner and we're aiming for sustainable growth. Uh, but the bigger impact then comes from the second le level, which is continuous learning. So we are developing the sustainability skills of, of our whole community, so students and staff members. Um, and, and we are trying to integrate sustainable development as a as an cross-cutting uh, theme in everything that we teach in all our education. And that there's a lot of work to be done there. So that everyone who works here and everyone who graduates from Metropolia will be will have the know, sustainability know-how that they can then implement in their everyday work life or in their everyday life. And the third level of impact is the solutions. So we have five innovation hubs here in Metropolia where we can develop uh, solutions for these huge sustainability challenges such, such as climate change. So we can really provide solutions that can be then uh, uh, expanded into the society uh, more widely. But yeah, this is a summary of our sustainability work as a whole. And you can see the link there below if you want to go uh, on our sustainability website and see it in more detail. Uh, few words about sustainable development goals, which I know you here are really familiar with. Uh, we started actually our sustainability work in the beginning of 21 with, with an SDG analysis. So we did a materiality analysis on which of the SDGs are the most important for us. Because we, as Minna mentioned, we are a really big organization. We have a lot of people we are doing, we have so many different fields and we are doing so many different things. So we have realized that we have to focus on, on, on the most important SDGs in our operations. So we identified these eight SDGs based on Metropolia strategy. So that was the viewpoint or the focus in the analysis. We didn't focus on what uh, subjects we are teaching or, or what we are doing in our innovation hubs as, as themes, but more on a strategy basis. So these are the eight key SDGs for Metropolis operations. And the idea is that uh, uh, the SDGs are kind of the, they are the framework for our sustainability work in which we operate. And finally, to go in, into more detail, this is uh, the summary of our uh, sustainable development roadmap that we built last year. So in order to uh, bring 
the sustainability work from strategy to the everyday life of people here in Metropolia, we realized that this uh, roadmap would be a really good tool for that so that we can have clear targets, clear timelines, clear responsibilities for things that need, we need, need to do. And these are the five main targets that we identified in our, uh, in our work and we built this roadmap in a really collaborative way. So we had students and, and employees uh, participating in the process. And, and we had also a questionnaire to all of our stakeholders about our sustainability work. Uh, the first target is about our social sustainability. We lead responsibility and, and by put, putting people first. And here I always have put a few examples of what we've been doing or what we are doing currently, just to give you an idea of the practical issues that we are doing. So with the social sustainability, we have an equality and non-discrimination non plan and currently we are building a code of conduct for Metropolia as a whole organization. For the first time, we actually haven't had a, a proper code of conduct uh, so far. So it's really important to have the common rules of how we operate here on our everyday life. And also at the end of th this month, we will publish our first uh, sustainability report, which we then uh, we comprised all the key issues that we've been doing. So stay tuned and, and you can read more from there. Uh, our environmental target is to be carbon neutral by 2030 and it's a really ambitious target. Uh, of course we have to cal calculate our carbon footprint which is uh, actually a lot of work in itself uh, to do it in a really ambitious and, and as comprehensive way as possible. We're using 100% renewable energy and our Mullebura campus is this so-called smart campus. There has there's solar panels on the roof and, and a lot of technology and AI things that you can then use to develop the, the facility. Uh, then our uh, economical target is to grow sustainability, grow sustainably and invest in the future. And the idea here is to build the groundwork and build the principles for, for uh, our economic work. So we are building responsibility principles for procurement and uh, renewing our investment strategy so that we have more ESG principles there. So this is what we are doing currently. Then about continuous learning, our big target is that everyone at Metropolia will get sustainability know-how. And we are currently offering a sustainability course for all Metropolia staff members that we built last year. Uh, we made an AI, so artificial intelligence based analysis on, on how SDGs are uh, uh, presented in our curricula. And also now we are in the process of doing a current state analysis on how sustainability is being taught in all our degree programs. And this project is going on this year so that we know what, where, where are we now and what we have to improve so that everyone will get the sustainability know-how in each and every course that we offer. And finally, uh, we create innovative solutions to sustainability challenges and uh, last year we did a SDG analysis in Innovation Hub, so in, in a similar way as, as with the whole Metropolia. The, idea was to identify which are the most important, most material SDGs for our innovation hub so that they can then direct their uh, uh, projects towards those most vital ones. And uh, a fun fact, we had 100 RDI project, projects uh, last year solving sustainability challenges. But yeah, I think I went through everything I was quick, so if you have any questions, please ask or comments. Otherwise, thank you on my behalf. Thank you, Mrs. Oyala. And uh, next uh, six speakers will introduce about the SDG 4 Peace project. First, Mr. Michael Kenny from Metropolia University of Applied Science 
will give you an overview of the SDG 4B's project. Mr. Kenny is a leader of piloting in this project. He has a licensure of social science and master's in business economics. He has been working in higher education for 30 years in international businesses. Please welcome Michael Kenny. Thirty years, eh? <laughs> right, I, I don't think I'll need this. Nobody's ever accused me of being too quiet. Uh, why are we here? Why are we here? I always get philosophical every Monday morning, standing here in front of a large group of students who are similarly asking themselves, why are we here? But maybe a more urgent question is, do we want to continue being here in an environment that's supportive and pleasant to be in? And this is where the origin of this project comes from. Or to put it in more straightforward explanation, we have a situation in which we are consuming resources at a greater rate than they are being replenished. We're not very efficient in the consumption of these resources. And, well, it's just not sustainable. However, we have an economic system that is good at organizing things in certain ways. And if we can combine elements of that economic system with, if you like, the tools that would enable us to be more sustainable and generate value and prosperity, then that would be a good thing. And this ultimately is the purpose of this project because, as you can see, there's a number of problems that we're trying to address here, but a big problem is number two, which we are trying to address very directly. Higher education institutions' curricula do not include business opportunity recognition of the sustainable development goals, and future management lacks critical competences. That's terrible. That's appalling. And we need to fix that situation fast, which, again, our project, we like to think, will help us to do. This problem has been recognized to a certain extent, but we aim to push it further because there's a lot of awareness of sustainability today. People generally have a good understanding of what it means in principle. But the problem is the practice. How do we apply our understanding? How do we make it real? How do we make it more than just an idea or a discussion point? That's the challenge which we are in the process of addressing by developing, as written here, an innovative and scalable curriculum. In other words, one that we can roll out not just through Metropolia, not just through Hagahelia and all the other partner institutions which are represented in our multinational project, but ultimately, certainly, throughout Europe and beyond that, because it is a truly scalable global model that we have are in the process of developing. And this, if you want to find out more about the origins, is where the idea ultimately comes from. A co-author paper published two years ago appeared in the Finnish University of Applied Sciences journal, where you can find the basic ideas all there but of specific interest is this model here of where the sustainable development opportunity recognition comes from. Various elements, including we have to be motivated. Altruism certainly helps. It can't all just be what's in it for me. It cannot just be purely self-interest money-making, although we know that that's a powerful motivation. But we also need to address 
problems relating to our lack of understanding of our relationship with the environment. Uh, putting that right in order to use the resources that are there in a more efficient and less damaging way. And also we have to be mindful of the threats which now exist because we've already consumed a lot, we've already generated a lot of waste and now we need to address those problems too. But within all of that there are opportunities which we can address and that's what we're trying to do in our project and as a result we have a multifaceted, multinational, multi-perspectival, multi-talented team that's in the process of putting together a set of simple blocks in which business opportunity recognition can be enhanced, can be increased. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a combination of entrepreneurship and sustainability in action. Putting effectively our money where our mouth is, but in the process generating more money, true, but doing it in such a way that's much more sustainable than we have been. And through the tools that we are in the process of developing, we can already, starting now, transform our relationship with the material world and provide a basis upon which this and future generations of learners, whether in higher education or in business or in government agencies or wherever it is possible to apply entrepreneurial principles, where all these people, now and in future, can, with greater confidence and knowledge of what is possible, and also motivation, the desire to do good, they can take advantage of the business opportunities that are out there, but they need to recognize them first and then employ the resources necessary to capitalize on them. And for the rest of this morning, this is the program that you will be presented. A summary of each of the modules which we as a team collectively are preparing for rolling out to as many as will receive them as possible. We start with the basic business opportunity recognition, entrepreneurial principles in module one, and then each succeeding module specializes in a particular area of practice where these general principles will be applied. But you don't want to hear me talking about them. We've got much better qualified people who can explain all of these things to you this morning. And I'm looking forward to hearing what they have to say too. So thank you for coming. Thank you for participating. And collectively, we look forward to your future participation through the application of what we're developing as a team. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, so next is um, first module leader, Dr. Annette Gairiko. She will uh, talk about module one, SDG Business Opportunity Recognition. She is a senior lecturer at the Haga Helia University of Applied Sciences in Finland. She has uh, 25 years of experiences in sales, marketing, and RDI activities. Please welcome Dr. Guy Rico. Yeah, thank you for, um, for having me here today. And um, I think I'm more comfortable without the microphone, but please let me know if it's if, it's, uh, if my voice is not 
strong enough. All right, so I'm happy to be here to tell you about the business opportunity recognition module, uh, which we have developed uh, during the past year. And uh, it's been a team effort, like Michael just said. So uh, this is also the place to, to, um, to um, emphasize the great work that my colleagues Anna, Marita, Orli and Päivi have been doing for uh, creating this, this module. So, um, Let's get started. So our starting point was that uh, every problem is an opportunity. So we all know that the complex issues in today's world require actions. But uh, it's um, looking at the same issue from, from another angle, that, that actually instead of thinking that we need to do something because we need to do something, we can also see that we may do something, we can do something, we can achieve something, and there is an opportunity. Uh, and um, that, that was the starting point. And then, as Michael said, uh, in our module, it was important to, um, <clears throat> to start looking at the entrepreneurial behavior, the entrepreneurial processes, how businesses emerge. And, um, and then we took uh, the theoretical viewpoint of business opportunity recognition process, defined as nonlinear, iterative, and interactive process. And that combined together the great, uh, with the great opportunity that if businesses start to emerge, if they start to solve the problems of our century, these huge problems that we are facing, that might be uh, the solution for, uh, for um, solving the, uh, the, the issues. Uh, our key components there are the triple bottom line. Everybody in this uh, audience is probably very familiar with it, referring to Elkington. Uh, the social, environmental, economic impact um, of sustainability. Uh, then the uh, sustainable business opportunity recognition process, uh, the graph that we just saw in the earlier presentation. And then, uh, of course, um, <coughs> we uh, were reading a lot of stuff about the sustainable business modeling, since uh, if we wish to uh, create new businesses, we also need to have that, not only the process of opportunity recognition, but uh, leading to business modeling. And uh, they're referring to, for example, Bokken et al. And today I'm going to walk you through the process, how we created the module. So these were the steps in this great team that I had honor to work with. Uh, workshops, reading circles, talking to potential learners, creating learning objectives, course framework, planning tools, contents, then finally adding contents to the digital platform, doing some pre-piloting. And now we are happy to be in the stage where we are actually finalizing this course. So a uh, lot of work done during the past nine months and, and now we are almost there. Great. But this was the starting point in autumn. Uh, a lot of workshopping. Uh, you have to remember that uh, all the developers within the team, but also across the teams, were new to each other. So a lot of, lot of common sense making was needed at the beginning, because we all approached the same issue from a little bit different angles. So we didn't uh, share the same context in, in, in that sense. And, uh, but those workshops were fun. We, we learned a lot from each other. Uh, we started to gradually see the pattern, how we are going to be constructing a course. And this was the initial framework, which has been actually, all of you who have been working with other modules, you can still recognize these, these main headings. We did some re reading circles. We uh, stepped into the shoes of students. So we were reading, uh, teaching to each other. And, um, and that was also great fun, a great method. Uh, if you need to, um, so to say, uh, learn within a short time a lot of new materials, so very efficient also. Uh, then we talked to people, to our potential users. We went to see people who are educators, university teachers uh, or managers. Uh, we went to uh, talk to entrepreneurs, business managers, consultants, and also uh, regular employees of companies and organizations. And we ask them about their relationship to sustainability, to business opportunity recognition, and uh, also uh, about their uh, <coughs> preferences in terms of learning in virtual platforms. And uh, then we created learner personas following the design thinking process. And this is an example, an extract, uh, how an educator, for example, uh, 
what are the motivations, interests, dreams, expectations, etc. Then we were that far that we were already able to start defining our learning objectives. Uh, every educator, every, every person who's been creating a course knows that the learning objectives are, so to say, the core of the course. And um, <clears throat> our learning objectives were defined as uh, what the SDGs in the context of business are, how to apply the SDGs for recognizing business opportunities, and how to develop a new, new business model on the SDGs. So uh, the sustainable development goals were there uh, throughout the uh, three uh, learning objectives, but uh, there was this entrepreneurial opportunity uh, driven thinking behind our all three learning objectives. And then uh, the next step, uh, after having defined the generic learning objectives, which you can see on the top of the uh, illustration, uh, then we started to look at the uh, process of business opportunity recognition defined as linear and non-linear uh, non iterative interactive process. And we started to group uh, what are those uh, elements that are, are the key and we were able to identify the context, motivation, networks, resources and business modeling. And of course the SDGs were also important. So, uh, so those were like the main uh, framework elements for our course. And we were applying uh, the dynamic capabilities, the continuous interplay of sensing and ceasing, and, uh, or acting, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and that was uh, something which was then taken into account, the three main um, elements of, uh, of sustainability, the impact on environment, society, and economy. Then everything became more concrete. We created a planning tool, uh, which uh, was, uh, inspired by another planning tool uh, created in another MOOC. So it's always good to steal and copy where necessary. And uh, there we started to create uh, uh, worksheets for our different, um, for our different um, um, sections. And, and then uh, items at the item level start to create contents. And then on the uh, left, left you can see the planning tool. And then on the right you can see how the same uh, content looks when it's already in the platform of its learning. Then content creation uh, was great fun, of course, a lot of work as well. Um, here, for example, an extract of uh, cases, stories of uh, entrepreneurs, companies, uh, uh, and uh, lo lots of other uh, contents that, that we, we did, both theoretical and practical, uh, to serve our learners. And then uh, parallel uh, in an iterative way, uh, we were also adding the contents already to the platform. Uh, we created these nice icons for our sections. And uh, this is a process which many of you are also very familiar with. Uh, we also thought about the pedagogics, uh, how to make this course inspiring uh, uh, for the learners, uh, considering they are professionals in the field, they have already lots of experience. Uh, we uh, decided to, uh, to have uh, the learning diary uh, approach, which enables each and every learner to, to use the contents for their own purposes, for the benefit of their own organization. And then we did also some pre-piloting a month ago, approximately. Uh, we were that far that the prototype was, was uh, at the stage where we were able to show it to the uh, potential learners. And, and the test persons were given the opportunity to navigate in the platform. And their behavior was observed and documented, so we didn't create any pre-designed questions or pattern, pattern of themes. So we really wanted to see what is the genuine reaction to the structure and contents when people see uh, in, the, in the platform. And uh, it was very interesting to see what the test persons do, but also very interesting to see what they don't do. So uh, sometimes you might think that you have created an item which is great, and then everybody is just skipping that item. That is quite a message as well. Uh, and uh, of course the benefit, benefit of this method is that it's an uninfluenced behavior uh, that, that you are observing, so uh, very genuine. And then we categorized the comments and further actions were taken and, and, uh, <clears throat> and that process is actually 
ongoing. So we are, as said, now finalizing the course based on the pre-piloting comments. And also yesterday we were happy to get some more pre-piloting comments from our colleagues uh, who have um, been working with another much. So key takeaways from this very insightful, great process, which I have truly enjoyed, <laughs> really, from the bottom of my heart. So the iterative development, uh, business opportunity recognition is an iterative uh, process, and, and so was uh, creating this MOOC course. Uh, and uh, it, it should be nonlinear, iterative, interactive. So we, we have to work within the team, we have to work across the teams, we have to be uh, also ready to give up some ideas, uh, take steps back, take, take back, uh, steps uh, forward. Uh, this is how you are creating a course. Uh, then the explicit sense-making actions, that it's, it's really important at the beginning of, of such a project that people have enough time to uh, sort of uh, start uh, building this, this common understanding. We come from different contexts and we take it for granted that uh, that other people see the situation from the same angle as we do, but, but that's unfortunately not the case. So, so that would be one of the greatest lessons learned for me that in the future there needs to be really, really uh, very explicitly time at the beginning for uh, communication and, and reflection together. Uh, then talking to potential users. Uh, in our team, uh, people are very familiar with design thinking methods, uh, even though that's the case, uh, we had to really remind us uh, every now and then that we have to show this to the actual users. So really do as you preach. And, and that was, uh, those were the most eye-opening moments when we were showing the platform or our ideas to people who are potentially going to be using our course. And then opportunity recognition approach, there is great potential. Uh, Content-wise, we have gotten very good, very encouraging feedback. So I truly believe in what we've been doing here. And, um, <clears throat> And what is important to note is that such courses that are targeted for a wide audience of different uh, people with different backgrounds, uh, uh, the expectation and, and the level of prior knowledge varies a lot. So uh, that's something that perhaps people in our module were pretty business oriented, business background people, that we've learned a lot as well that, that if nurses are taking this course, they have a different standpoint. So, uh, so that has been also a great, great uh, lesson to learn from, from this uh, project so far. So thank you very much and I hope I didn't uh, exceed my time too much. Thank you very much, Dr. Gairiko. Next, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Kagri Blut uh, will introduce about the Module 2, Food and Agriculture part of the project. Professor Blut uh, is the Director of Graduate School and Associate Professor at, at the Faculty of Business Administration at Yasser University in Turkey. Please welcome Professor Blut. So, this is I will leave the microphone as the Michael started this trend. First, I would like to thank dear director, Minna, for inviting us here, and all the colleagues and partners, and Hannah. Thank you very much. Because I talk that uh, Anita has told about the full structure already. We have followed that structure. Here, you will see, I will not talk about this, but you may see this is the Michael tool, so I will not take a lot of time. But this is the technical way, and we had the emotional way of this journey, because that was pandemic, that the project has accepted on the 1st of January, but before that, one or about a year, Hanna, isn't it? For writing all the project and making the consortium, trying once and trying another one. It was great. We had worked really great to get this project. So first, I would like to present my sincere thanks to Hanna, because why? This is opportunity recognition through SDGs. And this opportunity recognition will be disseminated to thousands of people. Without finding out this opportunity recognition as itself, as a self-reflective, now we are here. So thank you. And what we did, of course, lots of meetings. I don't know the numbers, maybe more than 100. <laughs> Isn't it? I don't know. 
This is our team from Yashar University who are not here and also uh, you have the presentation as well right now, right? Wolfgang is not here? No, okay. So this is Burcu, this is one of the shadow hero of this module, which you have here also Oli. We have talked with him a lot of about the GDPR issues, or how to share all these, the camera systems, everything. Uh, Burcu is a PhD candidate of the European Union Studies and she is doing many things behind. Michael, thank you again for participating in our great module. And Rita as well, is Rita here? I have to say about we have very carefully selected the professors in our university. We have seven faculties in the university, 10,000 students, and mostly we are mostly in the scientific part of the making publications, lots of research. Dilvin is a finance professor, talking also Japanese. Sarpil is former uh, bank general manager and also uh, associate professor of economics. So we develop different framework with that. Emel is a marketing professor, we have asked from her a different issue, so she prepared a tailor-made study for that. I'm going to share the titles. And Murat is an excellent researcher in the field of services, so food and agriculture is from farm to table, and there are lots of components in the service industries. And Asil is really different perspective, because since the morning we have talked about the industry, University and state, because we are all working in the state offices. Which we have missed is the fourth part, the NGOs. As it has complemented the fourth part. So she prepared the quadruple helix model. I will not talk a lot. This is the learning outcomes we have developed all together with lots of co-creations. The main idea is to recognize the business opportunities and then evaluate the ideas to filter it and to get the feasible ones and then to pilot it. So the learners who are going to take these elective ones after the obligatory first one that has recognized us, uh, will be able to first understand, filter and then pilot it and if it's feasible or not they will see. These are the titles has a logic on that. One of them, the first starts with the economic perspective. We see the whole picture in the agriculture policies in the economic development, what are they? And after that, a quadruple helix model will come into play because we have to make the network within that macro environment. After all, we have to understand the macro environment, the actors, now the planning starts. How we do the planning? And planning goes with the life cycle. And after all, we have a great case just received from Michael, carbon capture and the sustainable use of the pitland. It gives a good sense of understanding for the learners. At the end, from ML, I asked from the marketing, because from the farm to table, which is always missing, is the marketing activities. People go for the sales or suppliers or buyers go and find themselves in an uncertain environment. However, there is a here, a part for the food and agriculture industry people how to market their products and themselves. And the last, not least, as in the business plan, what is at the end? Is the financial evaluation. So the last part ends with the financial evaluation. Thank you again for having us here. It's our pleasure. I will catch the time. So five minutes is enough. Thank you very much. Next, the uh, third module leader, Mrs. Pili Alonso, will introduce the module three, city part of the SDG 4 biz project. Mrs. Alonso is the director of an applied innovation in strategic settings at Technica in Basque Vet Applied Research Center in Spain. She is an industrial engineer with extensive experience in management and coordination of innovation projects. Please welcome Mrs. Alonso. Hello. Good morning to everybody. 
It's lovely to say so many of you here today. I am Pili Alonso, the head of the Applied Innovation in Strategic Settings in Technica. And Technica is the research center of BET in Basque Country. Sustainability is one of our challenges. So I'm pleased to have the opportunity to share with you the exciting work we are developing in SDG for Peace project. I hope give you very good idea of how we are working in each one. So as you can see, we in this module, this module is about cities. I mean sustainability in cities. And we are a teamwork which are formed by Technica, Agelia, and Metropolia. In Technica, my colleagues, Miren Canellada, Amaya Sastre, Marie Jose Barriola, John Echeveste, and thanks to Agelia and Arika Rosendal, and from Metropolia to Perth. I would like to to start explaining which are the phases of the, of the modules, we are, which are the spaces we are trying to develop in module three. We think it's very important, in, as a module one has told us, to identify which are the main phases. I mean, we are talking about SDGs. Which SDGs are important in cities? Which SDG could be applied in SDGs? And when we are uh, thinking on creating business opportunity, we, do, we, we have to look for the context. In which country I am, in which context I am, and which are the strategies, the main strategies that the country are developing. We have to talk also about motivation. Why I have to create a new business opportunity? And for that, what resources or what network do we have? And finally, we will get the solution, business opportunity recognition. And for that, in our module, we, in, in, in online, sorry, in all the learning training, we will have real companies and organization examples in all phases. So I will start with the first step, the first phase. The teamwork, the first thing she, she had to think about was which, are, which were the SDGs more in, with more impact in cities. And we, we, we conclude that those ones, those six, six SDGs, are the more important ones. We are talking about, of course, SDG in cities, but there are another related with it. I'm talking about health, responsible consumption, decent work, of course, yeah, I'm clean energy, climate action. From the seventh ones, those are the most important ones. And how do we get them? We analyze the mega trends and cities strategies. So it was important to analyze the context we are moving in. And for that, we have a European Environment Agency that says that we, uh, we have to look for some lenses. And here you have five lenses that are uh, about low carbon, resilience in cities, circular city lens, inclusive city lens also, and healthy city lens. What, do we, what did we do? We analyzed the strategy in Basque Country and in other countries. And we are talking about, for example, the strategy in Barcelona Sustainable Future are trying to develop. And for, for example, here in Finland, towards a carbon neutral city. And in Basque Country, we have a an, uh, an, an specific agenda 2030 also. So we analyze of all the strategies we have involved in cities. And we, we get a conclusion. We think we have a business opportunity in three main areas. I'm talking about silver economy, because uh, all, all of us knows that the pyramid, the, our pyramid is changing the shape. And in the future, and the near future, I would say, we will have good opportunities in silver economy, in cities, of course, also. And uh, what about mobility? Mobility taking into account uh, in, in a general way, we will see later on. And the last one, but not least, the circular economy. Motivation, why I am trying to, why, why I, I, I would like to create my own business opportunity? 
why entrepreneur be an entrepreneurial person? We have all of us are, are worried about uh, different issues, about vocability, about light pollution. In, it's a global discussion. Discussion we know. For example, in Basque Country, there is a company, a furniture company, that is now developing an entrepreneurial company, and a, a small startup inside of its own business model. And uh, he, uh, they have a very special project called Cube. They do flats or special houses with cubes, and they have a lighting control within an artificial intelligence. Yeah, so uh, we can resolve the problems we have as the light pollution problem. But for all that, we need to know which are our resources. I am talking about the technological resources, for example. In civil economy, we have a lot of opportunities and a lot of technological develops that we can catch them and create our business opportunity. And of course, in mobility, the same batteries. We will see later on also. But we can't forget about the networks also. And we, we thought that the networks were the funded, funding opportunities, which are the main funding ecos ecosystem in each country. We, 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 should, we, should we do a mapping of our ecosystem? Research opportunities. In each country, we have research centers. They can help us to, to, with our prototypes, with our services or product, whatever we want. So it's important to look around us and evaluate where are those research centers. And of course, uh, business opportunities as development agencies. There are some countries that has, I think most of them have developed agencies that can help us. And in the last phase, we have the business modeling, business opportunities. So we, we also have divided the business opportunity in three areas, I would say, as I, I mentioned before. We are talking about circular economy. OK, why not replace traditional material inputs or product life station models? Why not sharing and utilizing products? Or recycle waste into secondary raw materials. So in that phase, we will analyze the opportunity that circular economy gives us. Mobility, I have mentioned before, we are talking about not the electrical car only. We have a lot of business opportunity in mobility. Experiences, logistics, batteries, electric vehicles, autonomous vehicles, and so on. And in silver economy, as I have said, we have a very big opportunity. We have to think about those in subsistence, in protection and freedom, in affection and identity, in comprehension and understanding, participation or leisure and creation. There are business opportunities in cities talking about those items. So are you ready to change your city? Thanks very much. <laughs>
uh, try to make like a path from, from where we start, where we are now, and we, where we, we want to uh, arrive. And uh, thinking about that, um, I, start, I will start speaking about our institution, because it's from where I come, and also it's uh, some way the, the idea that I have in mind when I'm speaking about uh, this module and the motivation why we are here. And I hope that would be uh, also the contribution that we can uh, give to the, to the project. So where we come? We come from this. Okay? So Fenice in, in, uh, in Italian means Phoenix. So the, you know the, 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 the bird that uh, uh, burned again from these ashes? So Fenice comes from this area, this uh, was abandoned area, polluted area, uh, like uh, six uh, hectares. Uh, close to the industrial uh, industrial area of, of Padova, which is a very a very big industrial area, around 40,000 companies, and uh, from that ashes uh, we start recovering that uh, the place, not me personally, but with a, a volunteering project to clean up the area. So starting like from the bottom, a sustainability activity. And what it becomes that now this is the same area. So it's a small scale compared to maybe your big universities, but it's a, a, a kind of a small scale smart city with a, a sustainable buildings, a lot of uh, possibility to show, to see, um, solar panel, wind, um, also uh, wind uh, plants, uh, uh, sustainable buildings, uh, uh, everything is uh, like connected with uh, also a green energy and it's called Green Energy Park. So if it's possible, I would like to also show us a very short video, like 30 seconds about this. It should work, right? I go here. Close it. That's all. We have more videos, but uh, <laughs> just uh, I just choose one, which is fine. Maybe this. No. Okay. So uh, you see, uh, well, very very short, but we have professional training on the. the Related with um, uh, renewable energies, like you see, all of, uh, solar panels, robotics, uh, digital issue, etc., and uh, home building automation. Then we have education for uh, students. Like 50,000 students come every year to visit the park, and they make uh, didactical path over there. Uh, research and services. We work with co local university and other research center. We are also a research, a creative research center. And also free time. It's a park, so you can come there and uh, just have uh, fun. And, uh, uh, we have uh, summer camps for teach for children. We have a uh, barbecue, uh, whatever uh, festivals, etc. So it's also a park. So that's the starting point. So uh, why? Uh, and a part of this starting point also something that uh, we would bring to this project are also best practice. So within the park, we we made some projects, European projects financed by the European Union. For example, this one was one of the first one, and is related with the technological uh, evolution of the sustainable buildings uh, materials. So we uh, we, uh, we built two different houses: one with traditional material and the other one with innovative materials. And we make a uh, comparison between both to see which are the values of humidity, temperature, 
etc. Cetera, et cetera. So that was uh, one of the, the, the initial projects of the, of the park, and the two buildings are already there and we are using for different activities. And there's another project, is that one, where we uh, also put uh, together different technologies. So we built an, another house, also new with new ma innovative materials, with solar panels, and we connect with an electric car that was a traditional car, and we transform into an electric one, and then we can charge the car with the solar panel, and the other way we can charge the house's furnitures with the electricity of the car. So, and that's something that remains there. So we start with this. So that's our, our starting point. And also we have geothermical plants inside that we're using for heating and also for uh, cooling, and uh, so wind energy, etc. So. From, from, that, from that point we start, you know, from practical, fr practical things that are also in some way showing to the citizenship that these things are possible. So uh, using the uh, availability, the available funds with a lot of, with some creativity and, and we can show it to the population and also to using every, every day. And where we are now, and we are now co-creating this Module 4, Energy and Materials, with uh, these partners, Haga Elia, Metropolitan from Finland, Slovak University of Technology uh, in Bratislava, and uh, Technica. So we are a very international team, and also uh, that's something that I heard before that is difficult, and unfortunately everybody has a different view. But I think this, not, this is a, a, a very lucky opportunity. We are very lucky to have this opportunity, and also I think one of the purpose of this program is to share, uh, to put together people they don't know each other, they speak different languages, they come from different environments, they have different contexts because our contexts are very different, and uh, they and they need to, to to get an agreement and to work together and uh, uh, to reach some results and also to to show the results to others. So I think that's most important, as they say, the travel and the journey is the most important thing, not the goal, right? And I, I agree. So we are, here we are, uh, just to show you that we are working, <laughs> even online. <laughs> it was very uh, difficult, very challenging, because uh, we don't have two people, well, we have two people in the same country, actually, but uh, all the others are in different places, so it was very difficult to work together, but we, we enjoy it, I think, I hope. And, um, well, we are following the same structure that others uh, were presenting before us. So, uh, working uh, on this on this structure, on in, uh, on orientation, CDGs, context, motivation, and, uh, and, the mo and I'm not showing too much about this, also for the time, but <laughs> uh, we are uh, developing this on the platform. Uh, as I said before, energy are our focus, energy will energy, renewable energies and um, innovative materials and in the industry, uh, circular economy and uh, industry. So that's our, our, our focus and everyone is bringing its own experience on that. And uh, also, uh, you see here some innovative materials, some end case studies coming from different areas. And that's, I think it's one of the strengths to have different uh, experience from different areas, from different countries, and uh, also we are, can learn from, from each other. So, uh, where do we go? So we are the starting point, my starting point, where we are now and where do we go? Uh, well, we go to, to, to create this module uh, with uh, well, the curriculum, this inclu including uh, reflecting up, uh, upon video presentation, slideshow, empowered, podcast, video interviews with companies, uh, self-study and reading or reference materials, self-assessment, and uh, as I say, presentation case study, approximately 100 hours of uh, individual workload. That's, that's the, the goal that we, we, we are reaching now. And, uh, and that's it. Thank you. Next, Module 5 leader, Dr. Maria Nebitka Yarvi, 
Um, we'll introduce about health and well-being part of the SDG 4 b project. Dr. Bit Gayarvi is a nurse, nurse educator, and researcher who currently works as a senior lecturer responsible for masters in health business management at Metropolia. Please. <laughs> well, actually, I was hoping to have the Madonna at the moment, which I don't see at the moment. But others cope without the microphone, so I'm sure I will as well. So, Hanna, this is all your fault. <laughs> you approached me, I can't remember when, about maybe two years ago. And uh, you probably approached me because you knew that uh, Metropolia has a very strong uh, health and, and well-being department. So, so uh, and we have about 20 degree programs, so quite a diversity. And then, of course, you approached me because I'm, the as, I'm the, no, because I'm old enough, <laughs> which means that I have seen a lot of things. And, so that's why, but I, 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 I'm not quite sure whether I knew what I was agreeing to at the moment <laughs> when you were approaching me. Anyway, we took the module lead, happily, of course, and uh, I was uh, accompanied by Hayne Maisala McDowell, good colleague Michael Keeney also chipped in, and thank you very much for your contribution. From Hangahelia, we had some business uh, expertise brought in by Namrata Sethi, she's here, here she is, <laughs> and Lisa Kiviluoto Heinonen, who has expertise in, I would say, well-being, health and well-being, because she's teaching at uh, one of the uh, degree programs at Harva Helia, where, where the focus is on health promotion. And then, last, not least, from Technica, Amaya Sastre Osoro, if you're watching Amaya, we miss you, you should be here, <laughs> here. Right, uh, now because uh, like, the, like the other teams, we also had some difficulties with, uh, with the, the, the timings and, and not everybody could make it to every meeting. And, and so, so therefore we, we felt that it was important to, to listen to the end users of the module from early on. And therefore we, we created a group of uh, experts around us, five company representatives, three lecturers, and then some people from uh, international health and well-being business. So we, we were taking these iterative rounds with them just to make sure that we stay on the right track and, and uh, that uh, we are creating content, co-creating content, which is uh, useful for them. So very quickly, um, we were looking at using the same framework, which was uh, designed by module one colleagues early on. So we, we just adapted that into our module and, and uh, sort of chose to uh, uh, allocate the hours so that uh, each of the other uh, themes would be about half a credit, half an ECTS, except for business modeling, where we thought, which is, which we sort of thought that that's sort of a summary of about the whole module. So we, we uh, wanted to allocate the most resources for them, so three, three ECTS. Well, you've seen three, three or four presentations already before, so we are not that different when it comes to learning materials. They remain the same. Uh, not sure if we have enough examples from real life yet, because we learned uh, that uh, uh, that's, a, that's a valuable part of, uh, of the materials. But uh, other than that, uh, it's very similar to, to uh, the previous speakers. And uh, when it comes to the pedagogy, our choice was the use of a uh, portfolio because we felt that it were important uh, to, to ensure that these, uh, the learning results are implemented in the businesses, in the organizations where the learners come from. So we felt that uh, this would be a way of sort of uh, facilitating that process, that they are, they are collecting their assignments in the learning portfolio and uh, encouraged to uh, discuss 
and share their ideas and their experiences from learning in their organizations. Let's hope that uh, works out. And then, uh, so, so the thing is that they, uh, we uh, collected learning material for them and we allocated one or two assignments for each, each of the sections that you've seen before. And this is just an example of, uh, of the reflective assignment that we want them to work on. So I'm, I'm sure I don't need to work, read it out aloud. You, you can do that yourself. But, but uh, as you can see, it relies heavily on self-reflection and, and thinking about their own company, their own organization. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bitterby. Next, we have a great pleasure to hear about sustainable project going on in Finland. Uh, Ms. Olka Vartiainen will introduce sustainability at Business Finland. Uh, Ms. Vartiainen is a project coordinator at Business Finland and uh, who is uh, especially interested in the role of companies and uh, SMEs in the sustainability transition, please. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I think that here is a very nice vibe and it's been very nice to listen to all these presentations before me. But yeah, I come from Business Finland and uh, Business Finland is a uh, government organization and uh, we are offering for Finnish companies and for uh, some other companies too, but mainly Finnish companies uh, innovation funding and then also trade, travel and investment promotion services. And uh, we're quite a big organization. Uh, there is like 760 specialists in the organization and uh, we are located in 40 different foreign locations. And I think that there's like 16 uh, uh, offices in the Finland. So quite a big organization and uh, quite a big service portfolio. But uh, I will explain shortly, so what do we actually do uh, to help our customers? So first of all, we offer guidance for interna internationalization. Uh, and then we also have market information and contacts. Uh, then the funding, which I mentioned already, and I think that that's the uh, my, our most uh, popular, uh, or to say most known service, so the innovation funding. Funding, and uh, then we have also uh, programmatic work, and these programs usually have one theme, and these are actually quite linked to SDGs. So I will tell you a bit more later about the programmatic work. But yeah, and then we also have ecosystems, uh, which are like uh, mainly for SMEs, but there are these leading companies in included in the ecosystems, and I will tell you a bit more about them too. But uh, our customers are companies which are aiming to international international and inter international growth and moder modernization. Then we have also also research organizations, and then some public organizations too. And uh, these are in Finland and globally. Uh, we have foreign travelers and travel organi organizers. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, you know, visit Finland in, in the visit Finland side of the organization. Then we have also international companies and investors in the invest in Finland side. And then shortly about our strategy. Uh, what is our purpose? We, we are here to generate prosperity for Finland by accelerating our customers' sustainable growth globally. So these three are our uh, strategy's core areas. So competitiveness, economic growth and sustainability. And the uh, newest part of the core areas is sustainability, which actually came uh, 2020 to, into our strategy. And I will tell you a bit more about that because I've been working 
for a year now with the, with the sustainability. Uh, what are our goals in the sustainability? Uh, if we think about our customers, our goals are uh, that our customers will be developers of new sustainable solutions and operations. So we are the ones who are helping our customers to become them. And uh, how are we doing this? Is that we are increasing the envi environmental and social responsibility awareness and uh, helping our customers uh, to uh, create new solutions that increase carbon handprint. So not the carbon footprint, but the handprint. And uh, then also uh, helping our customers to create smart business models and solutions based on life, life cycle thinking. So huge linkage to uh, a circular economy too on this side. And as a society, we are aiming that uh, Finland would become the superpower in sustainable development. So an ambitious goal, but <laughs> goals must be ambitious. And uh, we are aiming that we have a high sustainability impact, especially globally. And uh, of course we have to decrease and help our companies and the whole society to decrease the uh, carbon emissions. And then also decoupling growth from resource use. And uh, why, why is, is the sustainability, so, uh, why do we have such a strong mandate for this sustainability? Uh, we conducted last, last fall a survey to our SME customers. And here are a couple of results from the main results from the survey. And it's clear that most of our customer, customers see that there are business benefits of integrating sustainability into business activities. And uh, the, uh, most, the biggest benefits that our customers see is that uh, sustainability is needed uh, when increasing competitiveness and also for ensuring future operations. And uh, it's crucial to see that there are, the companies are facing challenges. 81% of the, cost, uh, the uh, companies face challenges which are related to sustainability. And most of these challenges are related to measuring and monitoring and the fact that they don't have enough resources for sustainability actions in their uh, companies. Uh, here is, I will tell this quite short because I think that time is running out. But yeah, uh, what, are we, what are we doing in, the, in this? So we have this uh, development, development project going on in the organization, which will last until 2025. And the first two years, so last year and this year, is about embedding and organizing the sustainability in our own operations. So this has been really like the planning phase and doing research and workshops and, and uh, making a roadmap for, roadmap for these five years. And after uh, uh, next year, I mean next year, uh, there will become uh, new activities which are more related to customer facing work. So at the moment we are still planning and starting to implement the roadmap and piloting and testing uh, different kind of services. For example, ESG screening services and uh, doing small piloting projects when we're testing that if, for example, the carbon handprint uh, side of, the, of, our, uh, of our customer's side. And uh, so the first two years, as I mentioned, is, is inside the organization. So we are walking the talk, making sure that our own, own um, own practices are sustainable, so uh, the procurement side, traveling, etc., code of conduct, our sustainability report. Uh, we are making sure that we have frameworks for monitoring and impact. So KPIs related to sustainability are, are, are still on the process. We have some, but they are developed at the moment. And then a crucial part is how we're going to organize the sustainability inside our organization and which are the most important partners for us because we are we have many services but we can't offer all services so we have to find the most crucial partners and uh, act in a way as a platform to help our companies towards the right services 
and uh, already ongoing, but uh, next year really starting is the now we are thinking about the uh, company screening and screening and funding criteria. So we have to really demand more system and sustainable practices from our customers. So we are thinking how what are we going to demand? For example, the ESG, ESG ESG screening, which we're which we are piloting at the moment. And also we are thinking the ways how we are impacting in, impacting in global transitions, uh, embedding into our services the sustainability aspect, so it's not just like something we have add on, but we are now really thinking and doing this another project, like how we're gonna embed the sustainability into all, all of our services. But this, we, we know that it also requires new sustainability, service development too. And also, of course, a very crucial part for our actions is also influencing and communicating because we are a government organization. So we are, we are in the middle of the uh, customers, so the, so, co so the companies, and also in the middle of the political decision, decision making. So we have a huge impact there. And then about the SDGs, so I'm not I'm not saying that we haven't done anything for sustainability before. It's just that now it has been really uh, embedded into our strategy and now we are trying to embed it into the whole organization and the way we are working. But Business Finland has had already <laughs> before uh, many years an impact to the SDGs. Because we have, if we think about the three sides of sustainability, so the environmental, social and the economic part, uh, the, our focus has really been in the environmental side. So we've had programs and which are still going. We have bio and circular, sustainable manufacturing, health related programs, uh, developing market pla markets platform, which is aiming to the, uh, mm, uh, <laughs> sorry I forgot the word, but uh, to the developing markets, yeah. And uh, so we've had these, programs which, uh, which have a common goal and then we are uh, helping the customers with our financing and also the trade promotion services. Uh, and these are the main SDGs, there are also others but these are the ones that we have really pointed out and where we've had some actions going on. And uh, I was mentioning about the ecosystem work which we have ongoing, ongoing. so we have these leading company projects there are, I hope that they are familiar, <laughs> familiar. so we have, uh, we are funding uh, the leading companies and uh, they are committed to increase their research, development and innovation operations in Finland. And these companies are also affecting the SMEs through their, through their value chains. So it's not only about the leading companies, but they are like pushing the smaller companies to the right direction. And there are solutions like Neste with the sustainable and global or scalable solutions for the research and development of raw materials uh, that reduce use of crude oil. Then new fiber fiber based fiber based products from Fortum and Metsa Group, Nokia uh, energy efficient edge computing, Varsila zero emission marine, and the newest ones ones which which came uh, to this uh, project. In this year, uh, Meijer Turku, Borealis Polymers, which uh, they are uh, filling, uh, they have sustainable uh, plastics and then Valmet with uh, sustainable transition in the industry field. But th this is my last slide. It was very, very nice to be here and tell about Business Finland and hear about your project. And I, and I hope that we will have some, some cooperation going on with your with your project too. But thank you very much. So thank you all SDG for being the partners and the invited speakers today. The course is offered by the SDG for Beats project will be available online as well as via mobile applications from autumn 2022. We believe that our courses will be useful for students, teachers, and uh, company staff. The symposium and the SDG 4Bits project contribute to make the world rich 
the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you.